Well, welcome to Coffee with Joe. I hope you had a good night's sleep, and I wonder if you if you dreamt at all, because that's what we're going to look at today: dreaming. Job thirty-three. Elihu continues. Why do you complain to him, that is to God, that he responds to no one's words? For God does speak, now one way, now another, although no one perceives it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people, as they slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears and terrify them with warnings, to turn them from wrongdoing and keep them from pride, to preserve them from the pit, their life from perishing by the sword. God does speak in dreams now most of my dreams i think and they are i hope they're not words from god they're so messed up and so confused but sometimes we find that they there can be occasions when god does communicate to us through our subconscious here Job is speaking of God using dreams to terrify people against future pride and wrongdoing. In chapter 7 and verse 14, God has spoken to Job through dreams. That, that's already been said. But here, Elihu uses four words, dreams, visions, deep sleep, and slumber. And God is giving us these dreams for a reason. They are to frighten us. They are to warn us. They are, look verse 17, to turn them from wrongdoing and keep them from pride. And I think what, what is being referred to here is not so much a specific word from the Lord as a guilty conscience troubling us. In other words, God uses our consciences to speak to us. And sometimes we have very troubled sleep because of that. There may be other reasons that we have troubled sleep, but I think that's a, a pretty important one. Do you know what? Sometimes it takes that. We need to be aware of guilt and wrong. I, I'm just astounded at how shallow and superficial we are about evil and wrongdoing and sin. Just overall in the evangelical church today, I think there's just this unawareness of just how evil evil is and how prone to sin we are. Now, we always want to immediately put in a caveat and say, yes, Jesus delivers us from sin, but we need to know what we've been delivered from. And sometimes, do you know this, it's not bad to have a guilty conscience, and it, it's not bad to be disturbed in your dreams in that way. Now, we have to be very careful. Not every bad dream we have is God speaking to us, or it's not even our conscience. But sometimes... We do need to think about why we are so troubled in our minds. Uh, I, I do think dreams are just utterly extraordinary. I remember when I was, you know, in hospital, coming out of a coma, having—I wouldn't even call them dreams. I would call them visions, and uh, profoundly disturbing. One, though, was profoundly reassuring. It was—I I really do believe that it was God reassuring me and encouraging me and showing me something of what was was going on well of course the way that the Lord speaks to us most of all and the most sure way is through his word but I'm not one of those Christians who says well but the Holy Spirit can't I, I, I think we have to be very careful the Holy Spirit can't use dreams I think he can and I think he does I think we have to be careful in the interpretation of them if you like but I think he can and does, and, uh, and it would be foolish and unwise to, to say that he cannot. One more thing. Um, I wonder, you know, to turn us from pride, God speaks to turn us from wrongdoing and keep us from pride. I wonder if COVID is part of God speaking to us. I don't know. Maybe we'll look at that tomorrow. But meanwhile, um, love you and leave you. Uh, hope you have a good night's sleep. I uh, hope you get some rest and hope you have sweet dreams. Bye.